Thank you, Bonnie. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Traffic Safety Committee. Um, this open meeting of the Traffic Safety Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on March 29, 2023. All members of the Traffic Safety Committee are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The Act allows the Traffic Safety Committee to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northboro Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed in the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless, unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Uh, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Rachel Armstrong. Here. Brian Cole. I think you're on mute. Here. Thank you. Uh, Kate Gerard. Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond. In the affirmative, Scott Sharpentier. Present. Okay. With that, we will get started. Um, I guess the first item on the agenda is School Street, Brigham Street. Um, for, oh, this is the uh, four feet of space between vehicle and walker, bider, bike rider, um, which I believe, isn't that a state law already? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, there was a state law that was enacted, I believe, in 2023 that requires drivers to um, uh, motor vehicle operators to provide four feet of clear space when passing what's referred to as uh, vulnerable roadway users, uh, pedestrians, cyclists, horseback riders. Um, the uh, It's a new law, and I know the Mass DOT is uh, working through the implementation of the the, the process of um, uh, adopting and implementing uh, notification measures. The email came in specific to uh, School Street and Brigham Street, um, noting locations where there are no sidewalks and also a notation on Church Street going toward Boylston. So I think it's just more of a general comment. Okay. Um, I can add I some other streets that are exactly like that if necessary. No, I know there, there are a ton. Um, Whitney Street, uh, I mean, we can pretty much name almost any street here in Northboro, right? Not, so, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have yeah. um, uh, Sergeant McDonald in the uh, waiting room as an attendee. If you oh. want to promote him, that would be wonderful. Sergeant McDonald, welcome. Sorry about that. I didn't see that you were in the How attendee list. Um, so yeah, so so um, so you, uh, Scott, you said that MassDOT is working on signage. Uh, yeah, so um, Sergeant McDonald, we we're talking about the uh, four feet clear space for vulnerable roadway users. Um, uh, motor vehicle operators uh, required to provide four feet of clear space for cyclists, pedestrians, um, and um, horseback riders. The uh, <clears throat> MUTCD, Manual and Uniform Traffic Control Devices, in their 2023 edition, again, this, this is a federal document, Federal Highway Administration, not specific to the state, um, has, a, has this uh, quote in their, um, in their 2023 manual that the uh, MUTCD does not include share the road signs. Um, it is not a legal MUTCD sign, It was, but it has been commonly used. D uh, uh, drivers often interpret the sign to mean that bicyclists need to share the road with, uh, with roadway users, with, with motor vehicle operators. Um, so that's, that's the federal government. I do know that this, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has that law that they passed, I think it was in 23 or 22, Tom? Not sure when it was. Is it included with the move over? Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That was 
maybe even longer, 21, some of okay. yeah, somewhere in that range. So um uh Mass DOT did a vulnerable vulnerable road user uh pilot study and assessment in 2023 um that looked at a lot of different criteria on um vulnerable roadway users and motor vehicle operator interactions where there might be um, higher incidences of, of, of um, accidents, whether it be uh, congestion, lighting, um, they even considered environmental justice communities, uh, they weighed in um, uh, driver impairment, things like that. So that, that was just done in 23. Um, it was completed in November of 23. So I don't, I reached out to DOT this morning and asked them if they've been considering any uh, recommendations, regulations, engineering directives uh, for use of those, um, you know, signs. We've all seen them. You know, it's got the, it's a little triangle. It's got the bike on it. It's got the four feet with the two arrows. Right. Um, a lot of communities are in the position where they just put up signs how they want, what they want, where they want. Um, I live in Grafton. I have 15 mile an hour speed limit signs in town. They mean nothing because they're unenforceable, um, but they're they're nice to look at when you drive by. Um, Mass DOT is is in the process of evaluating how, when, and where to use these signs. So that I believe is what the the root of the request was: is trying to have some public notification about this law. Okay, uh, Brian. Thanks, Bill. Am I the only one who has? hasn't seen those signs like i know i don't get out much but like i have no idea what sign you're talking about i've seen a few of them around um okay. nothing in northboro obviously but um right. i think i've seen a couple in marlboro um they have a couple there um i've seen a few on the some of the state highways too like route uh, along route 20 not in the northboro stretch but one of the locations and, and in the study they looked at different um possible locations to place them. So for example, um, all right, use Bartlett Street, for example. You're on your cycle, you're riding down um, Forest in Marlboro, you get to Northboro, there is no marked bike lane. That is the type of location that Mass DOT is looking at to say, this is an opportunity to remind drivers, even though there's not a marked bike lane, please yield uh, four feet to cyclists. Um, that would be like a, a, a possible vulnerable user location um, that would be eligible for a sign, things like that. Um, maybe where there's a, a trailhead that, that exits onto a roadway where a cycle, you know, uh, um, you know, mountain bike cyclists are going to another trail, uh, something like that. So I, I'm not sure what the result is from SDOT, but um, there needs to be a consideration uh, of, you know, how many bicyclists are on this road? Um, is there a dangerous interaction? Uh, they have other things about um, unsignalized intersections and and the like. So uh, again, I, I I mentioned this committee a lot. I putting up signs arbitrarily just to let people know of the law really often doesn't provide much much benefit to the community. Um, so my other question actually is just how many drivers know about that law in general? Like I made the joke earlier about, about, you know, how tight the streets are over by my house, but I was walking with my daughter to school this morning, basically on the white line on the side of the road, because it's that or in the poison ivy. And every car coming, coming toward us was totally flummoxed about what to do. Right. If there was a law in the books that said you have to give us four feet of space, fifty percent of the cars I encountered had no would did not know that, eighty percent. So I'm wondering, I guess, if we should talk to our state representatives in addition to Mass DOT and see what we could, what the state can do to uh, publicize that law a little better, some sort of PSA to like let people know that that's the that's the role. Yeah, I think when this first came out, and Tom, you mentioned it was something like 2021, 2022. But I do remember like PSAs on TV um, about, you know, move over for bikes, move over for pedestrians. Okay. Um, but I think they only ran them like 
in the limited time because at the time it was, you know, COVID and there weren't a lot of drivers on the road to begin with. Yeah, I don't remember seeing a PSA. I I have seen those um, signs because that's how I found out that we had to move four feet. I only thought they were relevant for bike riders, for bicyclists. So I didn't realize they were also also applied to pedestrians. So um, I was a little bit clueless too until until this email. So clearly the word is not getting out. Right. I mean, and, and uh, a consideration is, and, you know, putting a short-term notification out there in the form of a variable message board. And if there's, you know, instances where the police are aware that, you know, people have reported close calls, um, you know, obviously this resident reached out with a couple locations of concern you know, a, a variable message boy that reminds people, you know, yield to yield four feet to, you know, cyclists or something. It's the law. It can, yeah. can help a, a permanent sign. It's interesting when you put a permanent sign up, it, it, it works for a little while. Then it just turns into white noise on the side of the road. Yeah. Um, people just kind of, kind of go right uh, by it. Now that the fire station has passed, maybe we can use that sign on Route 20 by the by the proposed location of the fire station and just change that for a week, yeah. right, or two weeks, and you know, move over, give bicyclists and walkers four feet. It's the law, type of thing. I'm sure. I don't know if we have or not. I'm maybe in the past, but I'm sure we can do again. Also, use like our Facebook page. We have all the Facebook, Instagram. You know, make a post about it. I know, I know tomorrow is uh, walk to school day, at least for yeah. Proctor. So it might be a good time to get that message out there. Yeah, that's all, all the uh, all the elementary schools tomorrow. Oh, OK. So, yeah. Brian, you walked to Proctor from your house? Yes, I did. Somebody oh. missed the bus. Oh. <laughs> so you have two walk to school days in a row. That's yeah, well, it was. Yes, this morning was practice. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's taking your life from your hands. like i it dare is, I anybody know. else to make that oh, walk i, I know for me too right. yeah i mean yeah. i live on whitney street and mm -hmm. coming around that corner by washburn where there's no sidewalks and it's a blind corner some you know mm -hmm. i am shocked that i see people walking their dogs and running all the time down there and there are just so many roads in town that you know yeah and it, it's peasley too on maple street is um a lot of I see a lot of people walking to school and it's not an easy road to walk on, as you all know. Um, Ridge Road too, but it yeah, the 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 narrow streets near schools um are very vulnerable. Yeah. Well, Maybe we if we can do our own type of PSA type thing, um, you know, Scott or or Tom, um, you know, through the Facebook pages and you know, like I said, you know, now we've got the the boards out there, the, the electronic message boards from the fire from the town meeting for the fire station. Reuse, see if we can reuse them for an extra couple of weeks. Yeah, I'll be happy to put something out and uh, and put it out there on on roadways where you know pedestrians and cyclists use it, and there's no sidewalks just to remind drivers, even Route 20, because everybody sees it. Right. Yeah, that's money. what I'm thinking. Route 20, because everyone sees yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing we should probably think about is, you know, during winter, not a lot of people are going to be walking, but come springtime. Mm -hmm. Right. People are going to be getting out and starting to walk. And maybe that's a good time as well to mm -hmm. sort of re, re, you know, re push that, you know, yeah. that, you know, drivers really need to be giving four feet. Yeah, yeah we can do that a couple, you know, a couple weeks before time meeting because we put them out you know, middle of April for town meeting. So put them out a week or two earlier and throw it up there then. Yep. That would be great. Okay. We'll do. We can do that. Thank you. Yep. Any other comment on that before we move on? Okay. I just, uh, I just texted the chief to see if he could get it on Facebook for us tonight or tomorrow morning for regarding the whole walk to school combo with the four feet thing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Tom. Um, so continuing discussion of Lincoln Street, Pleasant Street of the HCVE. Um, I know there was an email from um, a member of the public about this and uh, requesting that we look at using ARPA funds. I was sort of hoping that Lisa would be here so we could ask 
if they had ARPA funds left over um, to look at, at using the funds for this. So Scott, well, do you have any update? I do. Um, uh, Bill, you and I will be at the uh, select board meeting, I believe on the 28th. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's worthwhile for um, this committee to consider um, a motion or recommendation to the select board to request ARPA funds to support the um, uh, engineering services required for the uh, truck exclusion on Pleasant Street and Lincoln Street. If there's a vote by this committee, it goes forward, it gets emailed over to um, the select board, they understand it, and then Bill and I can be there to discuss it on the 28th. Now, I missed the last meeting. It's the entire length of Pleasant Street we're talking about? Correct. Pleasant, Upper Pleasant, uh, Lower Pleasant, Lincoln from Pleasant, all the way to West Main. Okay. Yep. Any board member comments about writing a letter? I'm certainly in favor of doing it. You know, I, I think it's a it's, it's certainly two roads that it's a truck exclusion is necessary on. Yep. Um, and Scott, how much time if we do if we're able to do that now, are they able to do that over the winter? Yes. Yep. That type yep. of work? The, okay. Yeah, I would expect the work to be complete in and around the holidays, um, with the expectation that by the time spring comes around and you know, kids are, are back on the streets that it's gone through the process. The process is long. We get an engineering study done. The engineering study and the findings come back to this committee like it did in the prior studies. This committee makes their uh, uh, recommendations um, to the select board. The select board then uh, in, uh, authorizes us as staff to solicit uh, the truck exclusion to MassDOT. We then send the request officially to MassDOT. Mass DOT considers it, and if they approve it, it goes back to the select board to officially and legally adopt it so that it can be put into the bylaws. We notify Mass DOT that it's been accepted by the select board. Then Mass DOT can send us the signs, and then we can put up the signs. Okay. So with the speed of uh, government effort, we can get this thing done by the time the snow melts that has yet to fall. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so... Unless anyone disagrees, I think we should ha write that letter. Um, do you need a vote, Scott? Or I, I think that would be that would be good to to, to show the select board how supportive the committee is. Okay, this. I'm motioning for the, that letter. So, um, is there a motion to send a letter to the select board recommending? The use of ARPA funds in the amount of $18,000 for an HCVE study of Lincoln Street and Pleasant Street. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I'll give it to Rachel. Uh, roll call vote, Kate? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Brian? Aye. And I'm an aye as well, so that's unanimous. So Scott, if you want to get that written up, I will. Yep. I can either stop by to sign it if you need me to, or we can sign it digitally, whatever. Okay. We'll do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, let's see, HCVE for Brigham Street. We've got to wait for the next cycle to do that one, correct? Correct. Yep. That's going to be first on our list for the next cycle. Yep. Um, 25 mile hour speed limit. I don't know if anyone has thought about what we should ask for survey questions. Um, I was thinking of just going over what Worcester has in theirs, which was pretty much, you know, are you in favor of it? Yes or no. Um, I don't know anyone that wouldn't be in favor of it, but I'm sure there might be some. Um, so maybe we can, we can look to do that. Um, this month, if someone wants to draft um, some, well, prepare a draft question or two, um, and send it over to me, I can I can review it internally with staff, uh, contact uh, some of uh, like the town clerk and and other staff and see what the best way is to get it out there, um, and then come back to the committee um, next month and have some recommendations so we can get it out over the winter, 
so it can be considered before uh, uh, the next town meeting. Okay. If no one else wants to come up with any, I can come up with the draft questions. Maybe uh, you know, share it with the with the committee here. Is that going to run afoul of the open meeting? Um, if we call, if we're just collecting questions, does that run afoul of the open meeting, Scott? No, no. So, uh, so the, the the committee can well a committee member can prepare uh, questions, or you got, you can all prepare questions, send them to me. I can compile them, send them out for individual comments. You give me the comments back. Next meeting, we have draft questions. I will then have a, a mechanism for obtaining the survey. I'm not a huge tech guy. I don't know if it's a survey monkey thing or is it a, I don't know, whatever. Right. Facebook. I'm not sure how to do it, but I'll, I'll figure out some way to do it and come back to the committee with that. And you say, yay, we go out there, we get some data and um, and then see what the next step is. But the, the, the point is that we, we do need to have a, a an article at town meeting. I'm not sure what that article is. Um, but in the event the survey is positive, we can reach out to our peer communities that have done it and find out their process. Okay. okay. So if anyone has any, um, let's set a, a deadline of two weeks, right? So if anyone has any questions that they want to add under the survey, just send them to Scott. And Bill, then, is there, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to nope, is, is there a link? You said there the Worcester had a survey. There was a link. Um, I'll have to look for it. I, I know Scott, I think I had sent it, forwarded it to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you just do a Google search, Google, maybe okay. on just, you know, Worcester Mass, 25 okay. mile an hour. I can do that. There's been a few communities that have, have gone in this direction. I don't know if they've been successful or not, uh, or if they've done surveys, but I know there's a few communities that have adopted it. Um, so at this point, we will open up for public comment if anyone has anything they'd like to add to the meeting. And there's nobody in the attendees list, so that will go pretty quick. Um, so next is the approval of minutes. So we have the minutes from August 13th. Did everyone get a chance to read through the minutes? Any questions? Is there a motion to approve the August 13th, 2024 minutes? So moved. Okay, second? Second. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Brian? Yes. Aye. Rachel? Aye. Kate? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, next is the September 10th, 2024 minutes. Um, any questions, comments, amendments? Hearing nothing. Um, is there a motion to approve the September 10th, 2024 minutes? So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Second. I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't think I can vote on that, right? No, yeah, me. You can second it. You just have to. Um, I'm trying to think of the word now. Scott. Was Abstain, thank you. You have to abstain My from bad. the I vote. Was there. Second. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll call vote. Uh, Rachel? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. Kate? Abstain. And I'm a yes. Um, so um, Scott and I are actually part of a, another focus group. And so that's why we sort of moved the, the meeting to seven o'clock. Well, my question to the group is, is, are, is everyone okay moving this to seven o'clock, at least for the next year? Yeah. Because they want to do it at the same time as this. So. Yep. I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we'll move the meetings to seven from six 30 to seven. Um, same thing. Second Tuesday of each month. So next meeting will be November 12th. If there's nothing else, um, it, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move, Mr. Chair. Okay, second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Kate? Aye. Brian? Aye. Rachel? Aye. And I'm an aye again. 
Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.